Okay, so now we'll start with New Year's celebration in Peru. The images, the three images um, that are there are different cities where New Year's is being celebrated. So you can see that it's a pretty big celebration that includes a lot of lights and colors. Now I'll show you a map. Sorry about where is Peru. So it's a country in South America. It's the one right um, circled by the, this red circle there. And as you can see, it's like near Bolivia, Brazil, Ecuador, and Chile. Now, Peru is a very diverse country. We have the coast um, being right next to the Pacific Ocean. Then we have the mountains. Uh, where the Andes are located. They're very, very tall mountains. Um, and then we have a part of the Amazon forest, um, which is the image right on the top right corner for me. Then Cusco is the city that's shown in the first uh, picture on the first line. Um, that's a city that's located within the mountainous region. So there you can see how there's mountains in the background and it's very traditional, very different to our main uh, city, which is Lima, which is the capital city. The bottom pictures are both from Lima. Uh, one is right next to the coast, um, which is a Pacific Ocean. There you can see it. It's that sea there. And then this part of the city is very modern. And then you also have a more traditional uh, part of the city, which is the historical center. And that's the one on the bottom of the, of the right. And that's where we have like the oldest um, cathedral and also Congress, for instance. So we, um, comparing it to the US, we don't really have a place where people go to, a physical place where people go to celebrate New Year. So in this case, in the US would be like Times Square um, where people gather and celebrate it there. We don't really have a place like that where people gather. So then I think that the most common thing to do is that um, for people, especially when it's um, with your family, more than friends, to stay at home and then turn on the TV and do the countdown as you're watching the TV. So I here included a little clip of this countdown. This video is from a Mexican TV channel. However, it's practically the same thing in Peru. Oh, okay. Um, yes, yeah, so this was a video. Yes, so that's what we would usually like see on the TV, this countdown and Sorry. We're going to try yeah. putting on headphones and you guys will have to switch and see if this helps with the sound. If not, make sure you have your sound all the way up on your computer, um, but we'll see if this helps. Let us know in the chat. Yeah, so I don't know if you uh, managed to hear me when I was referring to like, we don't have a physical place where people go to to celebrate New Year's. In the case of the US, I was thinking about um, that, that place being Times Square. Uh, so instead we watch the TV, we turn it on. Usually families do it, not, not much like when you're with friends. And then you just spend the last seconds of the year watching the TV while like the TV presenters um, count, count down the last seconds. And this was a little clip uh, showing that. Then these would be like the essentials um, that you would find in every Peruvian home uh, on New Year's. So it is a celebration, therefore there's always um, a family dinner. Um, you would usually gather with more than just like your immediate family, like your parents and your siblings. So you would also be like with your grandparents, with your uncles, cousins, for instance. Then we also have like this party objects like a tie, um, hat, sunglasses, and they're all yellow. Um, yellow is the color that brings fortune to you. So everyone tries to get as many yellow objects as they can. Then we also have a lot of fireworks. And people buy them and then they, also, they, they like, uh, are able to like just blow them up in the streets. I don't know if that's very common in the US, but I find that very particular of Peru. We also eat 12 grapes and every grape has a meaning. So 
one is for example so you have a wish for every single grape that you decide um, what it is however people mostly wish like for love for uh, financial stability so getting like good income level and then also health of their um, uh, relatives um, and then also a meaning behind the scrapes is that since there are 12 each one represents a month of the year and having this prosperity every single month and that would, oh yeah and then champagne as well so it's like a drink for for celebrating and then the last one is like the picture of a cd that it's all, always heard in every peruvian home which is called five to twelve which is like it's five minutes until it's 12 uh, p.m and yeah a.m sorry and it's like a song that kind of um brings the atmosphere like a uh, happy and sort of like in a celebration mode that a lot of people hear listen to sorry um so this is um a video of lima the capital city uh, on new year's and as you can see in the video there's gonna be a lot of high uh, fireworks so lima el año nuevo ustedes están viendo la ciudad cargada de fuegos artificiales sin duda para muchos es sinónimo de fiesta de alegría de bastante color ustedes se han puesto a pensar cómo reaccionan los niños como ese pequeño de tres años que se asustó y que quiso salir por la ventana de su casa las personas mayores las personas Yeah, so basically um, what the TV presenter is saying is that uh, fireworks are a synonym of yeah, like celebrations and happiness. However, at the same time, um, there is a, a, lot of, a lot of people um, use them and like this creates a lot of sound pollution that might affect negatively like animals that are on the streets or like, peop uh, like young kids or very um, old people. So I found this interesting things like fireworks is such an essential part of New Year's. However, it does have negative impacts in some people. So just a question to leave you with, it's like, should we still keep traditions just because like we've been following for many years or we should reflect and adapt them as time goes on progresses? Or like, what should we do in that case? Like if there's something that we think damages your health, for instance, or causes pollution, should we just keep them because they've been part of our culture for such a long time? or Should we think of changing our, our habits? So another tradition is to burn toys. Um, I frankly don't know why people do it, but it is a way to um, just, it's like a celebration really. And what people do is they buy these toys that are usually related to political figures. So it could be like the president or some congressman um, that is controversial or that, not the, that the whole provision doesn't support. So they just burned them. <laughs> And this is, I found it very interesting since um, they're like the leaders of our country. However, since people don't really support them, then this is a way of like rebelling to, um, against them. And now I'll speak about las cabalas, which are popular traditions that Peruvians follow on New Year's. And their meanings are not exactly obvious. So first I'll like to ask you, why do you think people do it? And then I'll give you the accurate meaning of what, it, what people try to aim at um, when they do them. So the first one is going around your neighborhood with an empty suitcase. So could you please type um, in the comment section or the messages, why do you think people would do that in the middle of the night? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention oh, that. Um, so they will travel in the new year. Yes. So that's right. Um, one of the comments was that people will travel. So yeah, people do that with the aim of attracting like vibes that um will make them travel in the future within the year. And then the next one is start the year with uh, a money, sorry, with like bills in your hands. 
And the last one, someone said, so they will fill it with special thoughts. So in the suitcase with special thoughts. I said yes. Oh, well, that's an interesting suggestion. Um, yeah, pe people usually do it because they want to travel within that year. Um, but I've actually never seen someone do it. But I've asked my friends and they, they told me that this is one of their traditions. For the money, someone said they might give it to people and start the year off with something good to buy. Okay. <laughs> so the guesses were um, so that they can give it to people and that they can start them the year with money so that they can buy something. Well, their clothes, the second um, reason is kind of close, um, but it's just so that you can like physically have money and that this will give you uh, economic prosperity for the year. So like since you start the year with money, then you also will end it with money. And this means like you actually have it. It's not just like a dream to, to get more money, but it's in your hands. Then the following ones. Um, take a bath with aromatic essences. Oh yeah. <laughs> they can smell fresh for the new year. <laughs> yeah, so someone said so that they can smell fresh for the new year. Well, actually, um, this is done in order to purify your soul. So you start like being at peace with yourself um, during the year. And number four, wash your hands at midnight with champagne and sugar. I think this one's very, very um, difficult to get. So it is to attract economic prosperity again. And people, yeah, just do it because these are some of like the essential objects that you find at, in your home during that day. So it's related with uh, getting money. Then fifth one, it's put in rice below the door. Someone else guessed for the champagne one, mm -hmm. have clean hands with no germs. <laughs> um, someone said maybe put the rice below the door for poor people or people that need food. Oh. Well, I had never thought about it that way. I'm so to keep away bad spirits. The rice? Yeah. Oh, okay. So some of the reasons why people think do this is because of um, some of the like the people that are watching this video right now. It's because of uh, to give it to the poor people and also to kind of deter um, like disease from coming into your home. Bad spirits. Bad spirits. Um, so the reason is actually very, very different. It's to um, like attract, like to attract vibes that will make uh, one of the fa of your family members get married in the within the year. It's very different, and I wouldn't really find a correlation between putting rice below your door and a wedding. However, like rice is thrown um, during weddings at the end, so I guess that's the the link between both events. Then number six is wearing white clothes. Yeah, so I'll say what, um, why, why people do this. And uh, it's very related to one of the, the reasons why people said rice is put in below doors. So it's to um, prevent any illness from getting to you. Um, and now I'll move on to kind of the last event that wraps up uh, the New Year celebrations. Even though New Year's just like one day, we do have um, a spirit atmosphere uh, sorry a celebration atmosphere until january 6 which is the day of la bajada de reyes and this is a celebration from spain that is now part of peru because we were 
uh, under like the Spanish um, colonization for many years. We received our independence in 1821. So Catholicism is very big in our country. 85% of Peruvians identify themselves as Catholic. And this is the reason why we commemorate on January 6th, the arrival of the free kings who visited Jesus, baby Jesus. And this kind of marks off, uh, marks the end of the celebration season. So what happens, um, like the, the reason behind the celebration on Baha, that, like the Baha de Raya celebration is that the free kings traveled for 12 days um, across, following the stars across the desert to find baby Jesus. And they were Melchor, Gaspar, and Baltasar. So each one represented a different continent, Europe, the Arab world, and Africa. And they traveled to, like across this 12 days to visit uh, baby Jesus and give him three gifts. So people that are Catholic might know that um, many um, children receive gifts on January 6th. So this used to be the tradition in Peru. Um, I spoke with my grandmother and she told me that in the 1940s, um, it, children would, Peruvian children would receive the gifts um, on January 6th instead of on Christmas, so December 25th. However, since the 1950s, um, Peruvian have started to follow the American tradition to receive gifts on December 25th. Before then, it, was, it wasn't the case. So this also um, marks how we have moved from like Spanish traditions to American traditions and follow those 